I'm Shobha Day and I'm on a power trip with an impossibly good-looking man. Someone who's frequently referred to as the patron saint of cricket in Pakistan. It's my proud privilege to introduce Imran Khan. Welcome Imran. Thank you. We're meeting after 10 years. Much has changed in your life. It's been quite a decade. What would you say was the single biggest moment that has defined this decade for you? Well, you haven't changed. Thank you. But in this decade, uh, a lot has changed for me. Um, for a start, I was married, you know, for someone who's, who was a bachelor for most of his adult life. Um, marriage was a unique experience for me. And with that, especially having children was the most incredible experience of my life. Uh, then, of course, I um, completed the hospital, which I had been striving for eight years before. And then I ended up in politics, which was a completely different field, completely different to my nature. Uh, someone who was a private person, suddenly in public life. And then anti-establishment politics, being in opposition in a country where opposition normally is not tolerated. So I would say it's been the most um, dramatic period of my life. Roller coaster would be a, an appropriate word to describe it, I suppose. Now, I, I don't know too much about cricket and I have no shame in admitting as much but I know enough about you and I'd like to really focus on how you have dealt with a very recent crisis in your life where you were attacked when you were going with your two sons you were driving to your farm and there was an assault uh, there was a robbery does that in any way indicate a breakdown of law and order in Pakistan much more than in the past I've never faced this in my life um, and if it wasn't for my children, I probably would not even have reported it to the police. But because my children were sitting there with their friends, um, and you know, this, the, the trauma of them watching a man holding a gun on, uh, on the driver's head and then pointing it at me, I think uh, that's why I felt I had to report it. But, you know, unfortunately, because of uh, massive unemployment and poverty, rising poverty, uh, crime has arisen in, in our country. But you are now a single parent and with it additional responsibilities. What would you say your primary duty is now to, to your two sons? Let me first say that I have, you know, the Almighty blessed with me, a lot of success, happiness, contentment, but nothing has uh, come close to having children. And, you know, I was at that age in my life where I, I was a hands-on father. Because, you know, a lot of the cricketers who I played with who were married when I was single, they did not have time for their children. But I gave my children complete time and I watched every stage of them growing up. You it know, must be particularly wrenching for you in that case that their time is divided between uh, their home in London and uh, with you in Islamabad and then Lahore and so on. So they've got three homes really, three well, families. Uh, you know, it was a period of great sadness, uh, you know when we realized that when my wife could not live in Pakistan, uh, we basically knew that, it, you know, the marriage depended on, on her living in Pakistan because there was never any question of me moving to England. And that's how we, we, when we married, that was the arrangement. When she could not live there, basically our marriage was over. But we still tried for a year and a half for the sake of our children to somehow find some sort of a compromise. But, you know, it's not possible to uh, have a marriage where you're living in two different continents. Um, so therefore, you know, I already went through that very painful phase where I was no longer living with my children, but actually going over to England to see them. I actually find it a much better arrangement now where all their holidays they spend with me and the rest of the time they're with their mother. It's not a satisfactory thing, but in the circumstances, you know, I'm actually very grateful for this situation. You were... Um not really uh, that young when you married, but your wife certainly was. She was just 21. 
and it was must have been a very tough decision for you at that time as it was for her what do you think of uh, cross religious marriages do they work what are the what is the success rate marriages are under threat all over the world anyway let me first say that um, you know i'm a dreamer i have always chased my dreams uh, it hasn't mattered to me whether everyone else thought it was impossible because whatever i did people thought it was impossible you know when i was playing cricket my two cousins were great stars at the time and everyone thought i they were much i would not make the grade then you know for hospital i struggled for 8 years everyone said it's not possible to build it and so on so for me if someone says it's not possible it does not stop me from doing something and so when i met uh, jamaima i decided that you know this is the woman and when she agreed um it was not going to stop me because cross culture marriages uh, are difficult uh you know in the end it is incredibly sad that it ended but let me just say that as you know what you you said later on marriage is basically uh, uh under threat uh, totally threatened in the western world yes you know in my country in my amongst my family it's unknown divorce is unknown in in my wife's ex wife's family it, it is the rule rather than the <laughs> exception well, and all my friends all my friends in england in the last 25 years and acquaintances everyone was divorced well of course your former father in law referred to your marriage rather ironically and prophetically as uh, saying that imran would make a wonderful first husband to my daughter did he in fact ever say it or is it part of media mythology i think it was uh, english humor you know it was uh, uh, you know because <laughs> he himself was married three times his wife a wife married twice his uh, you know i mean everyone just, uh, so, so maybe you know just looking at the law of averages he might have made that <laughs> statement but i really liked him we got along extremely well did the fact that he was jewish was it uh, a factor in uh, pakistan when you married jamaima and did your uh, rivals in politics use that against you the rivals in politics certainly used it against me and you know i never even took it seriously when people said it's part of a zionist conspiracy it was so powerful that actually people started you know you 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 repeat a lie enough times people start thinking it's the truth for me it never made any difference you know i mean even if jamaima hadn't converted to islam according to my religion i still could have married her if she remained a jew or a christian she was actually a christian but uh, whose idea was it for jamaima to convert was it hers was it yours was it your family's she got interested in islam because of uh, she studied it for quite some she time she studied it she read books your sons and are also being raised in the faith absolutely both of us decided always that they would be muslims in fact our entire families jamaima's family and my family decided otherwise they would have great problems of identity later on in life you know bring them up as muslims of course it's a, cho- a personal choice when they grow up it's up, up to them what it, whichever road they want to take but they should not have an identity crisis after 911 did you find it hard to travel as uh, imran khan actually it never affected me except in the us um you know when i when i went twice i was detained for 3 hours you know they didn't ask me any questions but um you know they were going through my papers but i guess um you know muslims have got to accept this that this is what happens in the us uh i personally think it's um you know it, it's against the rights human rights of people to be actually discriminated but just because you happen to be one of the 1.3 billion muslims and going to america you get uh, a different treatment I, i i do not agree with this whole war on terrorism more on terrorism more on politics more on imran right after the break but in the last 10 years i have to say that um, the country just seems to have forged ahead